All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this week's episode of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kobold, here again with my guy, Max Faulkner. Max, happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday to you. I am, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here again on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. It is always such a blast uh, working with you on this cold breezy every Wednesday, you know, waking up and we got, we got some juicy stories, some juicy stories to talk about. Keeps me up at night in an excited way when I'm trying to fall asleep on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I wake up every Wednesday ready to go. I don't even care about sleeping in if, if I'm not working and uh, love, love getting the, the notebook out and putting the the numbers down i love it um but like you said we got we got some juicy stories we we might think hey it's it's early may we don't have much to talk about but there's always things in the news we're hitting three different sports today max hell yeah three Three different sports when was the last time that we've done that we usually stick with like one sport for the entire episode Uh, i'm excited that we're talking we're going to have a nice variety for you uh, today uh real quick uh before we jump into sports uh cobrezi i just gotta ask you uh what do you think of these new headphones that i'm wearing do i do oh. i look more professional do i look well, like a podcaster now turn to the side for me yeah turn to the side let me see uh those are interesting those are inter- interesting i haven't seen any like that those look solid those look solid yeah. I, or do uh, i look like i'm uh in the fucking alps trying to climb uh climb mount everest i don't even know well, if that's the same mountain at the uh, same mountain range oh, uh, that's something, you, well, something you got, I should look into. You got a hoodie on, you got a hat on, and you get looks like you got your muffs on. So it looks like it's about 35, 40 degrees. I'm in the Alps. I'm in the Alps. Okay. Uh, right. That's that's where it is. It's cold. It's cold over here. Hey, you might as well switch things up, try different things, whatever. We're yeah, just screwing around here on the Don't Tell Mama Sports podcast. Hell yeah. But like we said, we got a big day today. Uh, we're going to finish up with the NFL draft recap at the end. Uh, it's going to involve me putting mayo in a drink and drinking it because Ooh. my Tennessee Titans selected Will Mr. Mayo Levis in a bet with our buddy Queef Sam Yeah, because his Colts were rumored to take him. Whoever took him was going to have to put mayo in a drink and drink it. So we're going to see that at the end of the day. So stay tuned for that. Hey, I just, I just got to give you respect for following through uh, with that, with your bet. You know, a true man, a, a, true, a true man of his word. True man he, right he here. Will do it. True man. True man. Word, your word goes a long way over here. Oh, I like that. I like that. So if you want to place bets, uh, Cole Breezy is the guy that you want to talk to because he will do anything to win that yeah. bet. But if he loses it, well, he's a man of his up. word. I'll he pay will up. pay up. Yeah. I, so I, Lannister. I, he's a Lannister. He always pays his debts. <laughs> Yes, I did not think the Titans were taking Will Levis, but we'll get into that later. In the middle, we're going to talk a little bit of NBA talk here. Yeah. Just had the just had the MVP announced last night. Yeah. And we got it. We got a couple things to talk about there, but we are starting today with baseball, boys and girls. And as always with our baseball talk, we're going to shout out the division leaders in the AL East. The best record in baseball still is the Tampa Bay Rays at 24 and 6. A plus 106 run differ- differential, Max. Rolling. They are rolling. Rolling. In the AL Central, we see the Minnesota Twins with a three-game lead at 17-13. and 13, Only team in the division with a positive run differential. Wow. I was uh, I was totally sleeping on them. Uh, I, I believe I said that the Guardians were going to win that division. It, there's, it, it's, it's, we, got, we got a while here. We got a, we long got a while, we got a while there. It's, uh, there's only a three-game difference and um i believe i picked minnesota and you were on the you guardians did. for that one yeah you did. Uh, we'll see. all i gotta all i gotta say about this uh we i feel like we say it every week here at the don't tell my sports podcast uh this division is super boring i am not excited about this division at all not excited they, they don't have the players that excite you Name a player that you're like, oh, well, what about, uh, what, you know, uh, uh, just well, who, who's get... a star that you're excited to see on either of those teams? Uh, Maybe Pablo, Shane Bieber? Pablo Lopez? Both pitchers we just named? Maybe. But uh, I think overall, people want that bat, right? That's what the, that's what the MLB oh, yeah. has changed. Well, it hasn't changed that way, but that is the most exciting thing in the game is – Home runs and RBIs. 
So it is. If someone can, if someone can name a player in that whole league <laughs> that you're excited when it comes to hitting, let us know here at the Don't Tell Mom Sport Podcast. Put it in the comments. Let's hear from you. Yeah, let's hear some comments. Moving on to the AL West, we still got the Texas Rangers with the two-game lead over the Angels, two and a half over the oh. Astros. A tight division right now there, 18 and 12 Rangers. Uh, I'm definitely surprised about the Rangers and the Angels. Uh, I, I was was definitely not expecting either of these guys to be competing up with the Houston. I thought it was going to be Seattle that was going to be uh, competing with them. Long season still. I think it's just still Houston's division, but they might have that World Series hangover, huh, Cobreezy? Could be. Um, it, it's a that's a good division outside of Oakland, the worst team in baseball. Right now, uh, sitting sitting at six and twenty four with a minus one eighteen run dif- differential. Ouch! Ouch! But happy to see the Angels two games over five hundred, two games back in the division. Hopefully, they can make some noise here. I, I like seeing the Angels. Hell yeah! Moving on to the National League in the East, we've got the Braves still in the lead. We've got a four game lead over the Mets and Marlins. Braves are really good. There's nothing more to explain about that. I think they have the MVP on their team in Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, I think he's the MVP. I know it's early. I know it's early, but I think he's going to get there. It's early yet. 20 and 10, the Braves. Also at 20 and 10 are the Pittsburgh Pirates, leaders in the NL Central. How about these Pirates, Max? Arg, here comes the Pittsburgh Pirates. I I, I freaking love Pitts, the Pittsburgh Pirates. I love their story right now. I can't believe it. I'm a Cubs fan. Okay, but... When you see Pittsburgh competing in first place, it's like, oh fuck yeah, this is gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good year. There's only one team in that division that really blows. Other than that, you're gonna see four teams fighting for the for the crown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Looking looking like a solid division right now. And lastly, in the NL West, we got the Dodgers with a one game lead over the Diamondbacks. They got Mm -hmm. a plus thirty eight run differential. Five games over five hundred max. Do you trust the Dodgers? I know you picked the Padres at the start, but are you leaning towards the Dodgers now? Uh, I still got the I still got the Padres. Okay, I still got the Padres. I think they had the youth, but uh, the Dodgers have the experience. And Clayton Kershaw, who we're going to talk about uh, very soon, Ooh, he continues. I, I don't know why I'm always surprised. Why am I surprised? I feel like it's always, oh, this is the year he's done. This is the year he's going to get hurt, and that's it. Because he gets hurt every year. He really does. Yeah, but still, with an ERA like at two, usually, you're like, well, how does he continue to do it? It's because he's an outstanding pitcher. He is. He is. And we'll get it. We'll get into him in a little bit. Um, good foreshadowing there, Max. We uh, Next part here for baseball, we want to look at the top five like we usually do for our Yahoo Fantasy League. Our league, okay? This is not going to be your league. This is going to be our league. Yeah, top five, but consensus around. It's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, The top four guys we've already talked about, the top three we've talked about for three weeks in a row now. Uh, Number one, number one is still Garrett Cole. Uh, Number two is Luis Arias. Number three, Mm -hmm. Ronald Acuna Jr., who you just mentioned as the MVP. Yeah. Then at number four still is Randy Arozarena from the Tampa Bay Rays. Best record in baseball. Mm -hmm. And then we got a new guy here sitting number five. And it's it was a close call, but like you said, Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, you know, he's looking good. He's looking healthy right now. He's he's pitched thirty eight innings, which is tied for sixth in the league. He's got five wins, which wins, which is tied nice. for first. He's got a, you mentioned his ERA is under two, one point eight nine ERA, pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. And then he's got a point seven six WHIP, which is tied for damn. first in the league. Max. Clayton Kershaw hasn't pitched more than 126.1 innings since 2019. Do you see him having a full season this year? Man, I, I wish I wish I could say yes, but I, I just don't see it happening. I think he gets hurt. It, he gets hurt for the past three, almost four seasons in a row. It's it's hard to say yes, but I hope he does. You know, uh, as far as this five and one record, four wins in a row. This guy is up there winning. Every time he comes out there, he won in the entire month of March. Clayton Kershaw's the man. I hope he stays healthy. Yeah, he's looking he's looking great right now. He's a third round pick in our league, and it's it's paying off so far. I said March. I meant April. <laughs> I thought I thought so, but it's May. It's can you believe it's fucking May, everybody? May 3rd, Come on, May third. 
the the Man. birds are chirping, the flowers are blooming. It's a it's a good time of year right now. Yeah, it's a good time of year. Max, anything else on baseball before we move? Oh yeah, our uh, sorry, our favorite to- our favorite segment. For oh. baseball. See, I see. I forgot. I forgot oh, to write man. it down. I was. I, I was going to say, are we done for the day? Is this Sheesh. it? Sheesh. You know, because if was... we're going to skip past uh, the, the biggest Sheesh. beefcakes, then we might as well not even have a show at all. Nope. Nope. All right. The, <laughs> all right. We. I, I. My apologies over here. We. <laughs> we got to announce our two biggest beefcakes of the week. Yes. All right. We got some good juicy stories today, everybody. We're going to be talking about a rod and Barry Bonds, okay? Now, if you're having a debate right now on who you think is the biggest beefcake so far, these two might top them. These two might be one number one and number two. Okay, I kid you not, but one of them is probably number one. So let's first lead off with A-Rod, shall we? You remember A-Rod back in Seattle? You remember oh, A-Rod yeah. back on the Young. Texas? Young hitting Young. the shit out of the ball. They had an awesome team. Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson on that team, too. How did they oh, not win? Yeah. How did they not win? Too Damn. young. Too young. Too young. Yeah, you're right, youth. Uh, how about when he was on the Texas Rangers and he won MVP there? And he had, I think, a 58 home run season, a 52, a 47. I, uh, I've uh, i still got a Texas Ranger A-Rod bobblehead. <laughs> you went to the game? <laughs> Didn't go to a game. I don't know how I got it, but. I've got a bobblehead of A-Rod in a Rangers jersey. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, that might be his – that might be when everyone loved A-Rod because when he went to the Yankees, man, people start – the Yankees fans entirely hated him. They just shat on him. He won an MVP and a World Series with you guys, uh, and they're just <laughs> super pissed off, and I think it's because of the money. The contract that he signed was so much money. And uh, But let's – Let's talk about why he's a biggest beefcake. All right. A yeah. Rod, there's nothing. I, I loved watching A Rod, but here's why you got to be, ah, oh, man, after a, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Why you got to break our hearts like that? A Rod, back in 2007, he admitted that he took steroids while he was playing for the Rangers for that three year period. The time that we loved him the most is when he was taking steroids. 21 is MVP. And it's when he hit over 50. I want to say it was 58 home runs that year. Okay. This guy, real quick, before we, you know, just kind of tell the bad parts about him, let's just name a quick couple stats. All right. Uh, He is a 14 time All Star. And he was, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I thought I wrote down some. Oh, sorry. Hit. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, he is a three-time MVP. His uh, career average is two, uh, 295. He has 696 career home runs, and he's also part of the 3,000 hit club with 3,115. Okay? This guy this guy's a stud. He's a stud baseball player. But uh, when he uh, admitted when he when he uh he okay when he admitted in 2014 is when he got suspended, which is kind of weird. It took a while for them to just finally be like, you know what? You, you you did you did uh okay we're gonna suspend you now yeah i don't know why it took so long that's why yankees fans hate him now uh this cost him a rod said that if he can't believe that he took ter- steroids that it kept it kept him up at night he was thinking about it and it cost him 40 million dollars cost him about 40 million dollars and also the hall of fame you're not going to see a rod in the hall of fame 696 career home runs uh, man, it, it's hard to believe that he would not be in the Hall of Fame. And then to top it all off, we got to bring up this J Lo situation. All right, <laughs> guy was it, it? The guy was <laughs> engaged to J Lo, and she broke it off. She broke it off. And how, how do you how do you feel about that, Kobe? Did that break your heart? Was it a an American sweetheart? Uh, it, uh, this it sounds familiar. I don't I don't remember when how many when that happened. But uh, did not break my heart. Didn't affect me in any way. No. But uh, too bad. Too bad a power couple goes down. I don't know why they were considered a power couple. It's just because they're both celebrities, and uh, yeah, a lot of money, a lot of money. That, that we apparently that's that's the power couple. It's not a couple that stayed together for fifty years. The power couple is A Rod and J Lo that couldn't even make it to the ceremony because she dumped them. And uh, you know what? I. 
Sorry, I'm not a big fan of J Lo. I'm not a big fan of J Lo. I, I, I don't fucking care who who here hears about it. Sorry, I think that uh, I, th- I think that she is too also too much of an attention whore, where she needs that attention in order to she needs to be in the spotlight always. That's why she dates these big time these big time baseball players and uh, singers, and she just needs to be in this sp- in the spotlight. So sorry, J Lo. Had to had to give you a little shit on that. <laughs> well, let's move on. Let's move on from a Rod. Sorry, a Rod. You lost J Lo. You lost the Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's such a such travesty for you, man. Sorry. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's move on to Barry freaking Bonds, man. Barry Bonds. You remember Barry Bonds? Barry's got to be one of our favorite players from our be. childhood. Has to be. I seen this guy have three home runs against the Cubs. Hitting it into the basket. I was like, damn, wow. this is a pure hitter. This was an, it, it suck, such an incredible player to watch. And when you hear this story, you're, this is where your heart's going to be broken, everybody. This is, this is where it's going to hurt. Okay. All right. So Barry Bonds, back in 2003, I'm sorry, back in 1998, he was working with Greg Anderson. All right. Now we brought up Greg Anderson before he was the guy that supplies steroids and he supplied even the needles to Jason Giambi and multiple other players uh, that's that came out and said they took steroids. So Barry Bonds was working with this trainer in from 1998 to 2003. Okay, in 2003, an article was published of. Uh, it was the Muscle and Fitness magazine. Okay, so they 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 were doing it on Barry Bonds, and they're like, "Oh man, Barry Bonds, you're ripped. Uh, we gotta we gotta see what you're doing. You're hitting home runs like crazy. We gotta see what's going on." Uh, so Barry Bonds described his training with with Greg Anderson. Okay, and so uh, so this uh, this uh, training this training session that he uh, received was prescribed by Bear Area Laboratories called Balco. Okay, so Balco, so it's a laboratory. Okay, it's a laboratory that was t- showing him a routine to help him better with baseball. Apparently, okay, laboratory. Interesting. Uh, so in 2003, investigators raid Balco. <laughs> Two days later, they raid Greg Anderson, how uh, Anderson's house, and take documents. And these documents said that he was uh, that Barry Bonds was using banned drugs. Okay, he had documents, he had proof uh, that he that he was working with Barry Bonds. Okay, in December of two thousand and three, Barry Bonds testified in a grand jury and said he would he would use cream and clear substance substances that Anderson gave him during the two thousand and three baseball season. Interesting, cream and uh, you wouldn't cream. think that cream you wouldn't think that cream would have like steroids in it. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Like, right, right. So I, I don't know if it did. Apparently, you know, I think that's that that's the mystery. I don't know if they did even have that. Uh that's we're learning more and more about steroids. You can put it on your tongue, you can put it in your ass, and apparently you can uh just rub it on your muscles, whatever you want. I, you I, want. I, I think the most popular way of doing it is putting it in your ass though. That's got yeah yeah I, th- I think everyone's <laughs> on board with that. It's your first time, all right. Drop your pants, drop your pants. Here we go. Uh, okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, he did so. Barry Bonds said that he never took any needles. He never was injected and injected by Greg Anderson. Never, never was even asked. Okay, but he did pay him fifteen thousand dollars for training, like straight up training. Okay, so. Let's skip forward. We're moving on to four extra years. Okay, that was in 2003. We're moving on to November 15, 2007. Okay, Barry Bonds is, in, is indicted on four counts of perjury. Okay, uh, one count of obstruction to justice. Okay, and he was accused of lying when he didn't knowingly take steroids given by Anderson. He also it was accused of lying that Anderson never injected him. Okay, apparently he, he was just lying in front of the jury. Okay. Anderson was then in prison for refusing to testify against Bonds, but then he was ordered a release. So he just got released. They got him. And then he said that uh, I did nothing with Barry Bonds and they let him go. Okay. Sure. August 7th, 2007, moving a, a little bit further. Barry Bonds hits his 756th home run, beating Hank Aaron. Barry Bonds finished his season or finished his career with 762 career home runs. He is the number one home run holder and this guy cheated so you're never going to see him in the 
M- the MLB Hall of Fame. It's very unfortunate. A lot of these guys, all these rare clubs that they're a part of with the hits and the homers and but they all juiced so does it really count (laughs) well a lot of them are juicing so you know it's kind of getting to the point where you're an outcast if you weren't juicing so i i'm just kidding i I don't like that they cheated i'm i'm just kidding it it sucks it sucks because these guys are awesome hitters but we have some good hitters right now that play by the rules and some people we need to start talking about as far as best players of all time uh, is even Alvaro Pujols. Okay, this guy said, test me every single day. He, he said, test me. He said, Just test me. Test me. Test me. And uh, I think this is uh, why we got to start putting Albert Pujols ahead of these guys, Barry Bonds and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're you right about that, Max. Uh, a guy that's coming out and saying, test me every day. He's he's not juicing. So no. his numbers, no. his numbers in my book mean a lot more well thank you for listening to the biggest beefcake this week everybody i know that was a lot that's a lot to sink in that's that was a lot for me to talk about all right that was a lot i I was like oh man that's this is this is too much this is too much it was such a big story though such a big story i had had to try to squeeze in as much as i could there uh but i think barry bonds has got to be on top of your list now for uh the biggest beefcake it's got to be got to be but we'll be talking it's up to you we'll be talking about barry again He's yeah. he's going to be top five. <laughs> I can smell it. Yeah. Yeah. Moving in to some quick NBA talk. Uh, I, I don't know if we've talked NBA on here yet, Max. We haven't. Uh, we have bashed on it a little bit because we. Yeah, I mean, I personally believe this is this is me. And Nicole <laughs> Breezy, you can back me up on this, that we think that the NBA has changed. The NBA has changed, and it's not for the better. I think it's more about points and scoring and uh, the 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 circus show than it is actually the game. Okay, the the playoffs. I understand they are competing a bit more than they are in the regular season. I can, that's why I'm a little bit more interested in talking about the NBA right now. But during the season, it's just it's just a show. Everybody, it's fun for the kids. I understand that it's fun for the kids. You you said it right there. It's a show. It's fun for the kids. Um... You know, we see games in the in the 130s, 140s, 150s. Yeah. You know, 20 points today isn't 20. What 20 points was five, 10, 20 years ago. So it's hard to compare numbers. But like you said, we don't we don't watch the NBA during the regular season. We play fantasy. I watch mm-hmm. the playoffs. Cause I've seen a few games. I've seen a few games in the 90s. I have, and uh, the, there's more pride on the line. Good. But but Good. right now. We want to shout out the MVP. The MVP was announced last night, and it's my guy from the Kansas Jayhawks, Joel Embiid. Uh, okay. You forget that? You forget no, that? No, no. I, I was looking at where you were pointing, and I was like, oh, Derrick Henry? <laughs> Kansas hat right here. I, no, no, you you, you had it, but uh, okay. I just I just couldn't see the hat for some reason. Okay. But <laughs> I thought you were calling Derrick Henry. There. Sorry, Joel Embiid. That's, Joel uh, Embiid. Of the Philadelphia 76ers just announced last night, won his first MVP. He uh, He's the back-to-back scoring champion. He averaged 33.1 points this year, 30.6 points last year. This is his sixth straight season, averaging at least 22.9 points and 10.2 rebounds. So six straight seasons, giving you 22 and 10. Six straight All-Star appearances. This is his ninth season. Let's not forget, Max, he missed his first two years with injuries. Didn't even play. Yep. Didn't even play. People were writing this guy off. Terrible pick at number three. This guy's done. He's never going to be healthy. And, I mean, he really hasn't been totally healthy as he just just missed the last game. But he is playing tonight. By the way, he he said this morning he's back. He uh, This year he shot 55% from the floor, 33% from three. And 86% from the line as a seven-foot center, 86% from the line, he shot 10, 10 makes from the line with 11.7 attempts a game. He went to the line almost 12 times a game. Uh, man, I mean, Joel Embiid, is, he's a hell of a player, man. He's a hell of a player. I, 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 it's not much more I need to say. He's, he's up for MVP, it seems like, every year. He always, he's always losing it. And, you know, if there's three players that are just unguardable, the, these are the only names I'm going to name out. It's Joel Embiid, it's Nikola Jokic, and it's Giannis Antetokounmpo. 
I think those are the guys that are just unguardable. I'll throw one more at you. I'll throw Curry in that group. I'll throw Curry. Okay. Okay. I, I, I like it. I definitely like it on that one. And um, yeah. Speaking of those guys, the top three was Embiid, Jokic, and Antetokounmpo. Uh, Jokic was trying to get his third straight. Mm-hmm. And um, se- the 76ers haven't made the Eastern Finals since Allen Iverson in 2001. Mm-hmm. Now they're in the second ri- round right now against Boston. Just one game one without Embiid. Max, do you think uh, the Sixers can move on to their first conference final since 2001? I think so. I think they can. Uh, they, they have the players that are on the team to do it. They have the MVP now. Uh, it, didn't something happen with James Harden that that you you you? I think you brought it up. I think we have uh, some news, breaking news about James Harden. Uh, what? Yes. What? What exactly? Uh, uh, what happened there? His uh, his teammate, uh, James Harden. If we didn't see, he just had he tied his playoff career high uh, last night in Game One without Embiid. Forty five points, six assists. He shot seventeen of thirty from the floor, seven of fourteen from deep, four of four from the line. So he had this great game after he took a trip to Vegas this week. So the the Sixers swept the Nets. So they got done a little early. They finished on Saturday, April 22nd. And this game one against Boston wasn't until Monday the 1st. So he had a week and a day or so. Now this guy, James Harden, is nursing foot and Achilles injuries. Now, didn't look like he was nursing anything the other night. But this guy goes to Vegas in between weeks instead of resting, instead of re- getting shots up, instead of resting his body. And, of course, he's in the news. <laughs> There's a video out there. Everybody can go find it. Just just type in uh, James Harden Vegas slap it, <laughs> where – I've seen the video, so there's no there's no reportedly, allegedly here. I've seen the video where we see James Harden allegedly outside of the Flamingo Hotel and Casino, the Flamingo. He pushes a guy in the chest. I, they're talking oh. back and forth. Okay. Pushes him in the chest and then slaps him. An open hand slap is what Ooh, the report said. Man. An open hand Ooh. bitch slap, <laughs> if you ask me. Ooh, the bitch slap that everyone's going to hear about. Man. As he t- as he towers over this guy, that had to leave a mark. That left a mark on the guy, not only Max. here on the, not only on his face, but it, it, that's something that's gonna stay with him for a while. I got bitch slapped by James Harden. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> totally awesome, totally worth the trip, guys. Totally worth it. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. tell, I'm gonna tell my wife that I lost ten thousand dollars, but hey, I, at least I got bitch slapped by James Harden. Damn it, I got bitch it's worth slapped. <laughs> Max, now it, we see it didn't affect him in game one with the 45 points and leading them to a game one victory. Yep. But this, don't you agree with me that this has to catch up with him? He he can't be taking these trips to Vegas in the middle of the playoffs. What are you doing? Man, I wish we got to talk about doing a biggest douchebag in the NBA, kind of like what we do for football. The NBA has so many douchebags, and James Harden is definitely one of them. I thought that James Harden was one of the biggest douchebags when he wanted to be traded from Houston and just hold that that whole debacle and how he was pushing so hard to be traded. This guy was about to make 30, he might have been more than $30 million to play for Houston that year. And instead he needs to bitch and moan and tell me to trade. Get, get me tra- oh, get traded to Brooklyn. I'm sorry, get traded to Brooklyn. That totally ruined Brooklyn, by the way. That ruined him. Yeah. Brooklyn uh, got swept out of the playoffs, like I was just saying. Yeah, they had no chemistry, no chemistry there. It was all about who, who gets their own, who gets their own. A when you play, when you don't play as a team, that's what happens. I'm, I'm glad that nothing happened uh, for the Nets that year. But uh, I don't know if I got your opinion on going to Vegas in between series. Was that enough said that I, <laughs> fuck James Harden is one of the biggest douchebags in the league? <laughs> this is what douchebags yep. do. That's yep. that's. That that's that's what douchebags do. They don't Pretty think about selfish. the team. They think about themselves. And you know what? Whatever. I get it. You're making millions of dollars. You can do whatever the hell. You're in a you're a grown man. You're a grown man that apparently needs to go out and party, uh, with and a bitch slap a guy in order to feel good. But who knows? What was he doing? Did he? There's, was he just in the casino? Maybe he's gambling. Maybe he's just gambling. It was it was in the doorway, into the hotel casino reportedly. Yeah. 
Um, probably partying. And, He's not just going to gamble. I think I, I think it's pretty selfish. I think it's, it's pretty selfish. selfish. It's not, selfish. You're, Work with you're your not team. Watching, say- you're not watching tape. You're not resting. Yeah. You're out late. Why, why not call the the guys over for a brew and uh, maybe we can watch the. The, the, the other games, the other games that are on, and we exactly. can say, hey, or we could we could talk about how to how to work against, you know, how to play against uh, these guys that are coming up against us, or you know, or exactly. something like that. You know, there's other games on. Why, why don't you pay attention to that? But no, it's uh, it's different. The NBA is different. It is. You're right. All right, welcome back to the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. We're finishing up here with the NFL draft recap, like we said, but we wanted to bring in our buddy for this one, Queef Sam. Queef Sam. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on again. It's always a pleasure. Hell yeah. I uh, I see you got a fresh jersey on right there. You want to show that to the people? Fresh out of the package? Is that fresh out of the package? Give it a little sniff. Give it a sniff. It's fresh. Uh, Didn't get a lot of use this past year due to embarrassment purposes. Uh, But uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's some hope. There's some adrenaline. There's a shot of life back into the Colts organization. We'll get into that later, but uh, happy to be uh, rocking the blue and white today. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And uh, we wanted to bring you on this week, especially after the NFL draft, because we had a big bet. We did. Uh, We had a little gentleman's agreement. And I have to say, I noticed a new decoration to your background, uh, Matt. Well, if uh, nobody noticed, we got a... uh... Okay, uh, we got a pretty thick, girthy bottle of mayo, and oh, Duke's, mentioned- uh, Duke's mayo. Duke's. <laughs> right, it was what was right. left in the fridge from the people before. The people before. Oh, 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 it's not even your own. It's not I even checked your own mayo. Boy, boys, I checked the date. Not till November. Not till November. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Okay. So, okay. so the the bet, Sam. You want to tell the people what it was? Yeah. So Matt and I. Matt is a Titans fan. I'm a Colts fan. So we often jab each other throughout the season. Um, and it's been a little one-sided the last several years. Uh, mm. And mm. with the draft talk, uh, Matt was asking me how I felt about the Colts bringing in Will Levis. And I said, I didn't think it was going to happen. And I did think it was going to happen. Then all of a sudden you hear these trade rumors about the Titans wanting to move up, maybe they're interested in a quarterback, or maybe if they stay at 11, Levis will fall to them. Tannehill's only got one more year left. So Matt and I made an agreement that whoever between our two teams drafted Will Levis, either he or I would drink a cup of coffee a la Will Levis with a little squirt of mayo in there instead of cream and sugar. Yeah, and I the, the chances of this happening, very slim that that – specifically the Colts or the Titans would draft this guy. So I didn't think any of this would be happening. And I also didn't think the Titans were going to pick him. And you said that he could have maybe slipped to 11 for the Titans. This guy slipped all the way to 33. So with the second round pick, this might be good value here, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I... Go ahead, Max. Oh, no. Uh, that's that's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go Titans, <laughs> apparently. Go Titans. But – uh. As a man of my word, now I'm not going to do coffee. Now we, Max, I know you wanted to talk about this. I'm not a coffee oh. drinker. had had one sip in my life. I, I'm just not a not a big coffee guy. I would have had to go buy something from Starbucks. I don't know how to make it. So <laughs> another thing I don't like. Another thing I don't like to drink. I haven't had soda or pop, whatever you call it, in years. I haven't had soda in years. But I went and got oh, the original Coca-Cola. Taste, Coca-Cola. Uh, shout out Queef Wilson. He actually gave me this idea last night at work uh, to do Coca Cola instead. So, I'm gonna get a fresh, uh, mm. fresh boy here. And... Is that cold? Is it cold? It's cold. It was in the fridge. Anything Coke you got? On, mm-hmm. Anything you got on Will Levis, uh, Sam? Yeah, I think, I think it could be a steal in the second round. Uh, most of the draft analysts thought all four of those guys were going to go top 10. Um, and I was shocked to see him fall all the way to the second round. Um, I think he's probably a little bit more NFL ready than some of the other prospects. He spent two years uh, running an NFL style offense. Um, he's big. He's got a cannon for an arm. Um, he's smart. He, and he's um, just loves the game. 
the reason I thought the Colts might grab him is because our head coach, Shane Sykin, said he's going to draft a quarterback who's obsessed with the game, loves film, loves to work on his craft, and <clears throat> Will Levis is that guy. So that's why I thought for a long time he was going to be coming to Indianapolis. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. And if <laughs> – if he does pan out, it's going to get thrown in our face every year because we had the opportunity to oh, draft him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I don't well, think that's going to happen. Well, I, I think it very well could. Tan Hill plays one more year, I think, at $36 million, and then uh, get, Will, <laughs> get Will Levis in after that. Yikes. Sam, you've seen the videos a little more than me. Let me shake this boy up. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how long it's shake been Shake it like a there. shake weight. Shake it like a shake weight. There it is. Uh, Sam, you've seen the videos more than me. Um, I'm going to squirt it. You tell me when to stop. Okay. Oh, it's thick. That's probably good. That's probably good. Uh, <laughs> oh, look at uh, You might want to put a little bit more coke in there. Put some more coke in. You got a stir stick? I got a spoon. We We might be seeing you throw up, so don't throw up on that mic. That's not something you want to throw up on. Turn I'm towards looking. that jersey. Turn towards. <laughs> no, not towards the jersey. I'm looking right at a toilet, so I I get there. You can get... If uh, nothing else, myself and the viewers appreciate that you're a man of your word. We were talking about that earlier, Sam, and yeah. you know, a lot of people don't pay up on their bets. Just recently, we whooped some guys four on four at the gym basketball. Nice. They didn't pay, and one guy didn't pay up. Three guys paid up. One guy didn't. I'm a man of my word. You're going to see me pay up my bets if I lose. All right. That's uh, it's like brown. Nice. Kind of looks like, uh, you know, chocolate milk. It's like a mochaccino, a mayo chino. <clears throat> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Uh, a little thick. It was a little chunky. I got to mix it some more. <laughs> but but while you gotta I get a whisk, it, you got to get a whisk and like, like scrambled eggs. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see about this, boys. My eyes are already watering. Oh, but let's, boy. <laughs> while while I try to choke this down, let's talk about the NFL draft recap a little bit. We already hit on Will Levis. Let's start at the top of the draft, boys. First two picks for quarterbacks taken. Bryce Young goes to the Panthers from Alabama. C.J. Stroud goes to the Texans from Houston. I'm looking at I'm looking at weapons for both of these guys and. Whoosh, tough I with the Panthers we just saw Adam Thielen signed and then you got DJ Chark uh Terrence Marshall Jr they drafted Jonathan Mingo out of Ole Miss in the second round Hayden Hurst just signed there Miles Sanders just signed there Sam give me your thoughts on his weapons yeah I feel like they gave up a lot um as far as draft capital to move up to the number one spot um, so maybe this is the negative effect of that. They might be a year or two removed from adding him some decent weapons. Um, I think Bryce Young is the most NFL ready day one, uh, but he's still got to learn and grow. I don't, I don't think we're going to see crazy success in year one. So maybe it's not the worst thing, but yeah, Panthers are leaving a lot to be desired in the weapons department. Lots to be desired. Also, weapons to be desired. Max in Houston, we see C.J. Stroud's top weapons as Bobby Trees, Nico Collins, John Mechie coming back, uh, Dalton Schartz, uh, signed oh, from the Cowboys. Big sign. Big sign. And uh, they picked up Devin Dingleberry from the Bills. Max, <laughs> give me your thoughts <laughs> on those weapons. Oh, man. That's not... That's not looking very good. Uh, how old is Nico Collins? He's he's young, second or third third year, maybe third year coming up. Maybe, maybe this guy wakes up a little bit now that he's got a guy that can throw it to him. So maybe, maybe. But as a Houston, as a Houston fan, I, not me, but as Houston fans out there, uh, you got to be pretty happy with uh, C.J. Stroud. Are we excited about that? Are you nervous about it? Are we upset about this cognitive score that makes you nervous and shaky? Maybe, maybe, might be a tough first season for him, but you gotta, you gotta be excited as a Houston fan to pick up a quarterback that's, you know, it's, it's supposed to change your franchise. Hopefully, he's a franchise quarterback, but 
another franchise quarterback that a team is hoping and dreaming about uh, were the Colts, and they got your boy Sam at number four, Anthony Richardson, Hey-o. 20 years old. What is he, 6'5", 250? Sam, the de- he's I mean, definitely yeah. – my, Michael Pittman is the best receiver I've said yet for these guys' weapons. Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. Sam, let us know how happy you are about this choice. Look, boys, I'm ecstatic. Um, yeah, he's young. He's 20 years old. I mean, he can't even have a beer yet. Um, he, there's not a lot of film, college film. Oh, yeah. It always goes down smooth. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so there's, there's a lift <laughs> up. I, I'm trying. There's a, there's a, I'm trying not to breathe out of my nose. <laughs> Smart. Yes, there's a limited sample size, um, but the Colts are betting on his traits. And if you look at some of the area scouts, Chris Ballard and and the scouting department, they all sort of have the same thing to say that look, th- this type of guy comes along every 20, 30, 50 years. I mean, he's athletically gifted. I mean, he's an athletic freak. Um, we're not going to be good right away. I think mm-hmm. Jim Irsay, Chris Ballard, Shane Sykin, they all said Colts fans got to be patient. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a raw product. He, we got to fine tune. We got to correct some mechanics. Um, but we do that. And over time, then his talent will take over and, you know, he's going to be a human highlight reel. We hope, uh, for me personally, I would have been okay with him, with Levis, with anybody. I just wanted to see the Colts. Take a chance. It's time for Chris Ballard to get off the pot and draft a quarterback. No more of this one and done garage sale veteran yeah. quarterbacks on their last leg. I mean, welcome to the NFL, Colts. It's about time. And look, if we miss, if we swing and miss, at least we tried. Like okay. at a certain point, you got to draft a young quarterback high and go with them. And, you know, we saw what Shane Steichen did with Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, mm-hmm. you know, another athletic quarterback, lots of raw athletic talent. We'll we'll see what happens. But I think I speak for a lot of Colts fans when I say I'm just really excited. There's hope. That's the difference. There's hope. There was no hope with Carson Wentz. There was no hope with a, a broken, hobbling Matt Ryan. Uh, I think this changes things. So excited, excited. Heck yeah. Uh, Max, when do you get, when do you see Anthony Richardson taking over as the starting quarterback in Indy? The question what? is, who's the starting quarterback right now? Sam? Minshew. Gardner Minshew. Oh, Gardner Minshew. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Anthony Richardson, he might not be coming on this year. It might be next season, but he Jeez. maybe towards the end of the end of the year, though, they gave him some starts, kind of like what they did with Patty Mahomes. You remember that? Patty Mahomes didn't come on until late, late season and started showing what he can do. I think that maybe that's the opportunity they give him. But I don't think it's going to be he's going to be starting within the first four games of the season like uh, like the Bears did. Sam, what do you what do you think about that? I think it's a good point. Um, as far as Patrick Mahomes, the difference between the Chiefs then and the Colts now is that the Chiefs had Alex Smith, who was winning them games and taking them to the playoffs. We have Gardner Minshew, who who's a backup quarterback. So I think the Colts need to avoid being negligent and throwing him in there before he's ready. I mean, you yeah. got to do right by all the other players. I mean. Michael Pittman, Jonathan Taylor, even some of our veteran defensive guys, you can't, you can't throw him in there and it's going to be a clown show. He's, I mean, he's got to be ready, but with him only playing 13 games, the best way for him to acclimate is to get reps. So if he's ready and he has a decent understanding of the offense, I think you throw him in when he's ready because the biggest thing for him is going to be getting reps. Yeah. I'll, I'll be very interested to see the the AFC South now with, Possibly Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Trevor Lawrence. That's a yeah. That's a young, that's a oh, young yeah. group of quarterbacks right there. Look out for the AFC South in a few. That's years. fun. It totally uh, changed overnight. Yeah, it totally changed exactly. Overnight. Yeah, it did those uh those were the four quarterbacks we wanted to touch on. We want to touch on two running backs here real quick. Max, I'm coming to you for this one. Yeah, Bijan Robinson. You Ooh. called it. You called it. Going number eight to the Falcons. Nice one. He is going to be a difference maker. Max, do you see top 10 in fantasy from the running back position next year for B. John Robinson? 
I think that is a, his ceiling, as they say, right? As, as high as he can go. Yeah. He might be able to go a little bit further. I think that Bijan Robinson is going to get the ball a lot. Immediately, they're going to give him the ball because that division, who the hell knows is going to win that? Okay. Atlanta might have a shot. Why not, in, at least in the beginning of the season, just fucking go for it rather than try to get a high draft pick? I think that they use Bijan Robinson a lot. And I think that he can be, yeah, a top 10, at least pick in the, in the end of uh, our, our fantasy football draft. Because uh, we have a two-keeper league, everybody. Just remember, two-keeper league. I think he's 10, top 10 worthy. I, I think he very well be number one overall in our mm. draft, uh, guys. Um, Sam also in the league. Back-to-back queef of the year, if anybody forgot. Sam, queef Sam. <laughs> Sam, we, we saw last year with Atlanta, Tyler Algier. Rookie, fifth round rookie last year, had over a thousand yards, four point nine a pop. He caught sixteen of seventeen targets, and you know we got Cordero Patterson still there. He had eight rushing tutties, almost seven hundred yards on the ground. Are these guys just going away? I don't think they're just going away, um, but the ball is in Robinson's court. I mean, if he has a good camp, which I think we all expect him to, I think that backfield is his. Um, look, the Atlanta's always been known for having a dog in the backfield. I mean, you talk about Michael Turner, Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman. It's been a while since they've had a guy. And I think yeah. I think this is going to be their guy. Um, he's got to. I mean, there hasn't been a running back taken in the top 10 since 2018. That's five years when Saquon Barkley was drafted number two overall. So we don't see running backs go in round right. one. You're let right. alone top 20. So yeah. this is big. Yeah, this is huge. Got a quote here from Coach Arthur Smith. We're going to run the piss out of the ball. So <laughs> Love it. It's a I, perfect answer. B. John Robin, Robinson could be top five running back next year as a rookie. We see these rookies come on the scene. We've seen Zeke do it, Saquon do it. Uh, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head right now, rookies. But we've seen it before. He's fresh. He's young. They're going to feed him the rock. Moving on, we had a kind of a surprise pick at number 12. It was the Alabama running back, Jameer Gibbs. Yeah. And we saw a subsequent move by the Lions. I guess uh, DeAndre Swift went to the front office and said, trade me after they made that draft pick. So they moved DeAndre Swift to the Eagles. And we also saw the Lions pick up David Montgomery this mm -hmm. offseason while they left uh jamal williams go to the saints so whole new backfield here upgrade i don't know Maybe. what it's do you hard think, to say do i think, think that's hard to say because jamal williams had 18 touchdowns he had 18... 17. 17 17 okay well franchise that's, that's record a... well dave montgomery didn't have 17 touchdowns so but... five he had five uh, he got hurt and then also i mean david montgomery can catch the ball that's that's one upside i don't think jamal williams is uh, very good at catching the ball, but man, yeah, a three-headed monster. No one was expecting in that that pick by the Lions. Everyone was thinking defense, and they went ahead and drafted a running back. That was interesting. Yeah, uh, Sam. We saw Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift combined for twenty-five touchdowns last year. Do you think these guys get anywhere close to that? I don't know. I don't think you can say upgrade when. You had Jamal Williams doing what he did last year. Yeah. When the when the Lions made the pick, you saw Dan Campbell in the front office. Man, they were excited. My question to you guys is: Was that supposed to be Bijan Robinson, and that was their, or did they have? Was that their guy from the beginning? That's what they claim. Of course, they're going to say that. Yeah. But right. I, I, like you said, surprise pick. Surprise pick. Yeah. Very surprising. Um, that I just said, did you gag over there? I is gagged that... a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's still, still thick at the bottom. We're getting, we're getting down there. It's like a, it's like a mocha right now. I, my eyes are watering a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want those are the running backs we want to talk about, and then we we want to get in the receivers real quick. We saw four receivers go off the board in a row at number twenty. The Seahawks, the Seahawks took Jackson, Smith, and Jigba yeah. from Ohio State. And then next, we saw the Chargers take Quinton Johnston from TCU. Okay. And then at 22, the Ravens getting Lamar Jackson a little bit of help, getting him Zay Flowers. Mm -hmm. And then at 23, the Vikings take Jordan Addison out of USC. Oh, Vikings look good. 
Max, who's uh, who's going to be the best rookie receiver out of these guys in fantasy next year? Wow. You know, you really got to think about this because you're going to look, you're obviously looking at number one wide receiver, number two wide receiver, because Najigba, he's going to be a, a wide receiver three. You know, because yeah. Tyler Lockett's good and DK Metcalf is better. So yeah. I, I think that Najigba could be definitely fantasy relevant. Can we agree? He might be able to get you four catches, four to five catches a game. And hopefully that's 70 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> but uh, as a rookie, I'd, I would be nervous about him. But let's see, Jordan Anderson's the number two to Justin Jefferson. We have Zay Flowers, the number one. But, you know, you, other than Mark, you know, Mark Andrews is the tight end, but number one wide receiver. You got you got Rashad Bateman and then OBJ getting that money. Yeah. So those that's his competition. OK. And then uh, there was uh, Quentin Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Where did he? I'm sorry. Where is he's, he going? He's with the Chargers. So you think that that squashes Joshua Palmer's fantasy value. But yeah, he's, he's probably still going to need an injury, which will probably happen to Keenan yeah. Allen or Mike Williams. And yeah. Then, He'll be fantasy relevant if that happens. Keep an eye on Quentin Johnson. I I, I think that I think you got to that that might be the biggest biggest guy right now. It, it, it's it's kind of just more of a backup plan, but yeah, I I think that he's the big dog. He could be the number one easily as soon as one of those guys drop. Sam, who's your number one fantasy receiver out of these four rookies for next season? I would probably say Zay Flowers. I mean, you have OBJ coming off of injury. Um, I think, you know, he probably slides in to that default number one for a lot of people, but he's, it's been a long time since he played a snap of professional football. Let's not forget. I mean, the last time was when he won the Super Bowl with the, with the Rams. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been a full season since he's played. So, and Zay Flowers, I mean, he's breaking all kinds of records at Boston College. And I know during the COVID year, he was down south uh, training with NFL caliber wide receivers. I just think with what the Ravens had to what they're going to, there's a lot of potential, uh, a lot of grabs that that can go his way. So that's that's my that's my bet. <laughs> Let's well, not guys... let's let's not forget that OBJ won NFL's biggest douchebag of the year this year. All right, yes. let's let's keep that in mind. And he's back in the league, so I guarantee he'll probably be nominated. He'll slap somebody just like we saw James Harden do. <laughs> <laughs> An open hand bitch slap. <laughs> but you guys brought up uh, the first three receivers, so I'm just gonna touch on Jordan Addison here. Uh, mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson's gonna open things up for him. You got T.J. Hockenqueef in the middle, and he, th this guy could. Could be on his way to seven, eight, nine tutties as a rookie and yeah. really surprise people here. I like it. I like it. Minnesota looks good after hearing about, yeah, geez, that offense looks pretty good. They Aren't they trading Dalvin Cook? Isn't this an update? Sam, uh, you, that's been your keeper for a few years. Do you have anything on Dalvin Cook? Yeah, it seems to be the trend uh, yeah. the last couple of years. Uh, even guys that have meant a lot to your franchise that still have, you know, some relevant years left in the league, you know, teams opting to cut ties, trade, get some draft capital and and go young, you know, get guys on rookie contracts. And it seems to be what they're trying to do with Dalvin Cook. So I'll be watching that pretty closely to see where he goes, if he's going somewhere where he can have similar product production that he's had in Minnesota. But yeah, I was surprised to see that. I, I think as of right now, he's still a Viking, but I know, you know, both sides are willing, you know, to, to shop him elsewhere. Yeah. Good call on that. Uh, it's going to be interesting, interesting to mm -hmm. see that because that's a, that's been your keeper for, I don't know how many years, probably every year you've been in the league. Yeah, there was only one tight end taken in the first round. It was Dalton Kincaid out of Utah. The Buffalo, Buffalo Bills took him. Now, I don't think this guy is going to be very fantasy relevant. You got uh, Dawson Knox still there. You think he's going to be the starter, but I don't believe he's ever caught 50 balls in a season. So maybe the Buffalo Bills are looking to move on at the tight end position here. I'm going to have to say yes. I think that Kincaid can be a major factor right off the bat. This guy can catch the ball, and he's big. Uh, this guy had 15, 15, 16 catches against USC when they, they had this big rivalry game, and Utah just fucking smashed them. This tight end, is he's, a, he's good. 
He's very good, and I think he can take Dawson Knox's spot. Uh, Josh Allen needs another receiver he can throw to. And this big body, this guy that's huge now, I think it's, it was a steal pick, a steal pick by the Buffalo yeah. Bills. I think another steal uh, at the tight end position was Michael Mayer slipping into the second round. He he went the fourth pick, 30, 35th overall to the Raiders. Now, Sam, I'll sit here right now, and I'll bet you if you want to bet another bet, I'm definitely taking Michael Mayer next year in a Las Vegas uniform over Dalton Kincaid. What do you think about that? Oh, I'm not interested in betting you because uh, I think you might be right, but I did uh, find it pretty funny to watch him slide all the way to three because <laughs> on a previous podcast of yours, pretty emphatically, you stood up on a chair for Michael Mayer and said, <laughs> he's number one tight end, and if he's not on your list, I don't want to see your list. <laughs> I don't want to see yep. it. And, and this uh, – this, this, Draft didn't go as I thought, but Michael Mayer is the best tight end in this draft class. And one pick before Mayer was actually Sam Laporta, tight end out of Iowa. He went to the Lions. So Michael Mayer was actually the third tight end taken, but he's going to be the most fantasy relevant. Steps in for Darren Waller right away, and he's going to be ready to ball with our guy, Jimmy G. (laughs) Jimmy G. You have a lot. You have a lot of faith in Jimmy G giving him the ball, don't you? Yeah, Zach, Zach definitely we'll has see. more than anybody. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see about that. But uh, that'll wrap up this week's podcast of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. Sam, I uh, love that you were able to come on today to finish finish up the pod and uh, recap this NFL draft. Anything you got for the people before we leave? Believe me, I was willing to come on to see you drink mayonnaise. How was that, by the way? Did you finish it up? I yeah, it's it's pretty much. Oh, is that mayo. the mayonnaise on the bottom? It's it. I've been drinking the mayo, but it's pretty much uh sunk to the bottom a lot of it, and it's just pure mayo right now. I'm not going to be able to do that because the, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the last two or three. I I was gagging a little bit. Yeah. So I I think no, I, I had plenty. If if you see the line, the line the line's up here, and I I, I had that much so. I think that's plenty of fucking mayo to drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you go take we, a we, shit after this. <laughs> we appreciate you being a man of your word. And look, as far as the draft goes, every team, every fan, every coach thinks they won the draft and it's all rainbows and sunshine. But ultimately, it doesn't matter until September, until we start playing real games. But it's fun to speculate. And I'm just glad that the mock drafts and all the speculation is over. We actually know who's going where. And, you know, now we're looking forward to camps and seeing what happens. And yeah. Yeah. There were so many rumors and speculation out there. I'm, I'm happy it's over too. Uh, Max, anything you got for the people before we get out of here this week? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad that we, we have to go. You know, it's it's like it's like on all those uh, nursery rhyme shows, you know, the ones on Nick Jr. They always have like a song at the end of it that makes you makes you sad that it's over. You know, you're like, oh, man, you don't, you know, how about we just leave on a good note? You know, yep. but uh, I, I want to thank everyone for coming out and listen to the podcast. Please like, comment and subscribe. We are located on YouTube. We are the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. And don't you forget it. And most importantly, Sam, you're already on top of it. Don't tell your mama about this. Your mom is not going to be too pleased about Talking about how James Harden bitch slapped another person. She might, she, she, she probably knows a lot about it. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> yeah, your mama knows a lot about getting bitch slapped, huh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> giving bitch slaps. Oh, giving, giving bitch slaps. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs>